They are, it is August 23rd. And he from Greenback, Tennessee. And the world is waking up. The world is waking up. When we talk about the world, there's a few different terms that we can apply to what the world is. The world could be, you know, like the song, we are the world, <laughs> we are the children. The world, all the people. The world could be the beast system. The world could be the world inside of us and all the stuff that goes on inside of there. The darkness, you know. The world could mean the earth and, um, when we speak of the world, we don't mean the earth. At least when I speak of the world, I, I would not use the word world if I was talking about the planet earth or the earth on which we live, God's creation. Very, very different, totally different things. But the world is waking up. And what I mean by world is humanity. And I've talked about this before in using the word humanity for the word world. When Jesus in the is quoted in the scriptures as saying, you know, I came not into the world to condemn the world, but that through me the world might be saved. If we use the word humanity, I came not into humanity. I didn't become human. I didn't come into humanity, into the humanity of man, into the flesh. You know, the word became flesh. I didn't come into humanity to condemn humanity. But through me, humanity might be saved. Wow, what a revelation. And so we can use that word humanity when we think the word world. So humanity is waking up. World is waking up. We're in a great awakening. And <clears throat> the world is awakening to the presence of God. That we are one with God already inside of ourselves we are one with god when we come into the knowledge and understanding that we are one with god the lies that we have believed about ourselves begin to fall away the image that we have of ourselves through our trauma in this world begins to be renewed and healed and that's good news that is the good news of the gospel. Christ, the anointed one. Emmanuel, God with us. What did that mean? God with us. Is God with us or God not with us? If God is with us, then he's, he's with us. Always. God said, I can never separate my love from you. Why did we ever believe that we could be separated from God? Well, we were taught that sin separates us from God. But there's a, an awakening and a level of consciousness that is being blown open <laughs> in humanity right now. That is awakening to the truth that God is already in us and we are already in God. We are not separated from God. You want to come be on the video? Come stand. And so the world is awakening on a spiritual path, and religion is falling away very, very quickly. Religion is falling away, and the religious Pharisee in us is screaming. <laughs> now, if we look in the Gospels, this is what is happening. Who do we think the religious Pharisee of today is? I would ask you, if you're a fundamental Christian, who is the religious Pharisee of this day? Because the world is awakening. Humanity is awakening to God within them through a spiritual path. And the religious Pharisee wants to scream, but no, you have to do it our way. Your path has to 
be done the way that we say. And yet Christ came a different way with a different message than what the religious Pharisee was screaming. And this is not a message of condemnation, but it's a message to proclaim that the first shall be last. And that's okay. <laughs> Those who thought they were first in God will be last. And the last who came at the end are coming up to the front. Wouldn't that be God to humble those who thought they were first? God's ways are not his ways. So what is happening to the religious Pharisee in us right now? Is it coming to the surface? Are we being convicted of it? Are we seeing its spirit at work in us? And what are we doing about that? Is it breaking our heart? Is it humbling us? Are we repenting? Are we getting free? Because the world is awakening on a spiritual path onto God. And everyone is going up that mountain, a different path. Because everybody's path is individualized, and yet it's the same mountain of God that, that we're climbing. It's the same God. Somebody lied to the religious. Religion is a lie. And somebody lied to the religious in one way somewhere. And the religious, we, the religious, believed it. And we put God in a box. And we put God inside of doctrine. We can find God. And... We didn't allow our minds to be open to the mind of Christ. Any God that hates his children and would cause them to suffer eternally. I mean, just think about that as a parent. No, nope, they never said they were sorry, so they're going to suffer in hell eternally. Would we do that to our children who we love? And we're only human. And so the world is awakening that the kingdom is within us. The kingdom of God is within us and we have to go in. And humanity is going in through the sufferings of this present age. Humanity is going in and finding God on a spiritual path, not a religious one. And God is going to humble the religious who are willing. Now, if we are stuck in a doctrine, especially if it is our livelihood, it's going to be extremely, extremely difficult. If not, probably not possible in this lifetime to break free of it. And that's okay. Everything is as it should be. But humanity is awakening on a spiritual path that God is within. We are one with God and the kingdom is within. And this is the good news of the gospel. When we come out of this world, we find Christ in us, humanity to divinity. This whole theme is really blasting the consciousness of many right now. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, in us. Humanity, Christ, God became flesh and dwelt through us. We are this flesh. We are this human God. And yes, the religious Pharisees would scream, blasphemy, crucify her. Because that's the way we think when we're in religion. But all I can say is this wave is moving and it's moving quickly and it's accelerating and many are on it. You know, when Christ came, the religious said, we, we've been waiting for our Messiah all this time and he came like this. We don't want him crucified and get rid of him. 
The same thing is happening right now in this present move of God in the earth. The religious Pharisee is saying, that's not the move that we were praying for. That's not the way it was going to manifest. This is deception. This didn't come from God. Crucify it. We will have no part in it. The Bible is our soul journey. And God wants to open the revelations of it to all. And he will if we will allow our minds to open it. What is the greatest thing that hinders us from our minds being open? There's one thing. Yes, it's pride, but let's define it even more. The need to be right. I have to be right. I have to be right. Pride, Leviathan. Who can conquer Leviathan? Who can overtake Leviathan? I have to be right. If I, if I admit that I might be wrong all this time, you know, the trap with fundamental Christians is that they profess that they're not a religion. Everybody else is a religion, but we're not a religion. I know I was there most of my life. We're not a religion. We're a relationship with God. And everybody must believe like us. Otherwise, they're going to hell. So it's easier for those of other religions who actually define themselves as a religion to accept the fact that God is moving in the earth and awakening many to their spiritual path. And that perhaps their religion is good and it's been good for them and it's been acceptable for their walk with God, but they don't force it on anybody else. But the thing with fundamental Christianity is that it's it's an eroticism that everyone must come into this belief system that we are in. Otherwise, they're going to hell. And what a trap it is. And what a religion it is. How could we confine God to be so small? Because our consciousness was small, our understanding was small, but not anymore because the Holy Spirit is blasting the realms with revelation. And we are realizing the truth that God and we are one. We were just asleep. And when we can't become self-aware on this path, on this spiritual path, and we will become self-aware, what does that mean? We become aware of the ego. And we, come, we become aware of our humanity, but it's through our humanity, which humbles us, realizing our humanity humbles us, which that humility leads us to surrender and our divinity within us. It's a really authentic path. And everything that lurks in the shadows gets revealed. And that's the point of the path, is to venture through darkness, that we might be led into the light that is within. If even Christ in the scriptures proclaims that the kingdom of God is within us, then why would we ever go out if we were going to journey into the kingdom, which is boundless and endless and ever expanding and ever enlarging, we must go in. Where heaven is a spiritual place. It is a realm. It is a vibration which we carry. It is a frequency, love of truth. It is holy, it is a holy frequency. It is a pure and perfect frequency. And oh, to get the bliss of this frequency and carry it to the atmospheres. Well, then wherever we go, it emits out of us and we don't have to by any means of our own strength. Bring the kingdom because the kingdom goes with us and emits out into the atmosphere, not only where we place our physical feet on this earth, but through the realms because we're not confined 
to just this earthy, earthly realm. In the spirit, we have no boundaries. The kingdom has no end. And so it's easy and effortless. But we must go through darkness. We must go in. And so we run. We run from the inward places because that's where the darkness is. And we are like little children who run from the things hidden under the bed and in the closet and under our hearts and in our chests. And that's why when the body keeps the score, you know, we are spirit, soul, then body. And so by the time the energy that's stuck in us is stuck in the body, it's been there a long time. And the body screams out to be free, to be healed. And so the body of Christ is being healed. Dark energy is leaving. The light of God is arising and emitting. And the body of Christ is coming, bringing heaven to earth in a rapture and a return of Christ to this earth, bringing heaven to earth. In the days of the tribulations of humanity, And for some reason, we couldn't open our minds to these revelations. And it was not the appointed time. But now the appointed time has come. The seals have been opened. And with the seals of tribulation, so comes the seals of revelation and the seals of power and the seals of the veil being torn away. And experiencing the ability to enter heaven's realms and the realms of the kingdom of God that we have never ventured before. And what a gift it is. And though we become more and more present on this earth in every single moment, we're more present, we're more present in our lives, we're more aware, we're more self-aware, we're more present, we also, are letting go and letting go and letting go of the things of this world. This is the awakening for him that has been prophesied and talked about a long, long time. And Jesus is seen sitting on the outskirts, I believe, and he's looking down at Jerusalem the heart of his children, you know, that's what it exemplifies to me is Jerusalem is the heart of his children. And he's looking over and he's crying and weeping and he's saying, I came and they totally missed me. They totally missed me. I came in their, in their midst, their humanity. That's what the Holy Spirit is saying right now. Christ has come through our humanity. God is in us. And some of you are missing me. You're missing it. You've made it a religion. You've made it a doctrine. There's a, there's a huge piece, a huge door that hasn't been opened. And what is preventing that key is the pride of I have to be right. If I'm not right, I mean, my whole life was not true or I told so many people this doctrine and now what am I going to do? Well, perhaps that's the very humbling that needed to come in our paths that was to transform us and change us and change the trajectory that God wanted to happen inside of us. Perhaps that's where we entered into this religion. It's because we had to come to this point of humility and admitting I wasn't completely right. And there was so much more. And I, 
I acknowledge that. But many won't. And this is the crossroads that we're at. We're in the valley of decision. And we're going to either humble and decide to admit, I was wrong. So wrong. I don't have to be right. Because I want to be free. And I want to expand the kingdom. And I want to move with the Holy Spirit through the realms of this boundless kingdom. And I want to set free my generations, my bloodlines. I want to break the chains through the truth. So I don't have to be right. I don't have to be right. Well, many will die on the other side of the King Jordan. Many. Because Joshua and Caleb were sent out into the land to spy out the land. And when they spied out the land, the word of God says that they were of another spirit. So in other words, they were not of the same spirit of those who came before them. They were of another spirit. They were courageous. And they spied out the land. In other words, they uncovered what was hidden. What nobody wanted to admit. They spied out the land. This Bible is metaphorical. And they came back with the report and said, yeah, there's giants in the land. Wow, there are giants in the land. But you know what? With the Lord, God in us and with us, we can take them. We can take them. Wow, well, that's where we are right now. And will there be battles? Yeah, battles we're going to do in the spirit. That's why we see them marching around the city seven times. Worshiping. What is true worship? Well, true worship is what happens around the throne of our heart. Where we lay down the sacrifice of the ego. And the roar of worship breaks the powers of the air with that act of worship. We don't need to wield a sword. We just need to lay down and surrender. I'm not right. I'm not right about everything. I wasn't right. There was so much more. I didn't see it. I was blind, but now I see it. Paul, the greatest Pharisee, was blind. What does that say of us as religious Pharisees? Who are the religious Pharisees of today? Open our blind eyes. last how about going to somebody that's awakened that's experiencing this move of God and asking them questions and discovering what's going on what's happening out there if you are in mostly in the four walls of a church what about that maybe humbling and going to somebody What is the Holy Spirit saying right now? In my opinion, the Holy Spirit is asking us to do radical things. And if we're not doing radical things, we're still doing the same things, but probably in the old way. We're on the old timeline. We're on the old, in the old man. Because God is always new. He's always doing something new. But right now, God is doing so acceleratingly new things that we can, we're just getting blasted all over, all over the place. We're getting blasted. What a ride, man. What a journey. There's no judgment. There's no shame. Just how about we, we humble ourselves to somebody, a human being, or two or three right now. Holy Spirit is exposing the Pharisee in us all, which is the ego, and is exposing the religious Pharisee, especially. Why is 
We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Pharisees are in the temple. That's where they stay, in the temple. We are this temple. So if we deny there's a Pharisee in there, we are completely blind. There's a wave of authenticity and many are riding it. And they are getting free and they are on a spiritual path in the kingdom. They don't speak Christianese. They speak other beautiful languages. They're so humble and beautiful, those languages. How about we get to know those languages too? Our heart can hear them and our hearts are changed when we hear them because of their beauty and eloquence and humility. It's time. This is mercy. This is the mercy of God. And if we're gonna die on the other side of the Jordan, just to prove ourselves right. I think that's sad. Perhaps that is what is meant to be for some, for many. The journey is joyous. It is amazing. It is exciting. And right now, the multitudes are riding away in authenticity. It being real, they're exposing the darkness. They're not right about everything, that's for sure. That's for sure. Very humble. Very humble. Change our hearts, oh God. Blast through our minds and our consciousness. Set us free. Take us where we've never been, for we are already there. 